Hello everybody and welcome to Jeff the Pharmacist. I am Jeff. So today I wanted to talk about a, an interesting new, new product called Ozempic. So Ozempic is a medication for diabetes. It just came out. Uh, Nova Nordisk is, is making it. And it's similar to other medications like uh, Bieta, like Victoza. It's also similar to Saxenda, which is a, a weight loss drug. And what it is, is it's called a GLP-1 agonist. And what that means is it's a, it's a medication that acts like a hormone that's produced in your body. And the hormone GLP-1, what it does is it increases the amount of insulin that your pancreas produces in a way that is responsive to the amount of glucose in the, in the bloodstream. So by itself, it doesn't cause a lot of hypoglycemia. Another thing that it does is it delays gastric emptying. That just means it delays the food from the stomach from passing into the small intestines. And that can be good and bad. The good part of it is that you can lose weight, which is lovely because we all need to lose weight. And the uh, bad part of it is that it can cause uh, a lot of side effects like nausea and vomiting, uh, diarrhea, constipation, um, abdominal discomfort and in the clinical studies um, I have I'm just going to show you some um, some percentages here so nausea in the highest uh, dose ozempic group was one 20 percent versus six percent in the placebo group vomiting was nine percent versus uh, two percent in the placebo group diarrhea was 8.8 percent .8 versus uh, two percent in the placebo group 5.7% abdominal pain in the Ozempic group versus 4.6% uh, in the placebo group and constipation was 3.1% versus 1.5% uh, in the placebo group. So this is by far the most, um, the most common side effect is uh, like, a, like upset stomach you could call it, vomiting, nausea, diarrhea, these kind of side effects. and. A consequence of, of that actually is related to another uh, uh, side effect that occurs, which was kidney damage. So people, when they're having nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, that can cause dehydration. And dehydration can lead to kidney damage. And some people had severe kidney damage and actually had to go on dialysis because of, um, because of Ozempic. It wasn't that many people, but it was something that was mentioned in the... Um, in the clinical trials. There was also a higher propensity of people to get gallstones. Um, so uh, it was like 1.5% of people in one of the studies got gallstones and 0.4% in one of the other studies got uh, gallstones versus placebo, which it wasn't, gallstones weren't uh, really an issue in the placebo group. So for some people, the medication causes gallstones and that can result in people actually having to get their gallbladder removed completely. Uh, so that was an issue in the um, clinical study as well. Pancreatitis uh, was also uh, an issue. Um, it was like seven people had pancreatitis in the Ozempic group versus uh, three people in the placebo group. So on average, that was about a 30% in increase in uh, pancreatitis. People that were treated with Ozempic also had more diabetic retinopathy. Diabetic retinopathy is a retina damage related to diabetes. It was 3% in the Ozempic group versus 1.8% uh, in the placebo group. Hypoglycemia was also worse in uh, Ozempic because uh, while Ozempic doesn't cause hypoglycemia by itself when it's added to insulin or if it's added to uh, drugs that uh, cause more insulin production like sulfonylureas, glyburide, glomeparide. They kind of increase the amount of insulin that's being produced. And when you add something like Ozempic, it can make hypoglycemia uh, worse and, and um, can potentiate that side effect. Uh, there was also a strange kind of thing that occurred. And this occurs with the other, kind of the other drugs in this class. It's called immunogenicity. And it's where the body develops antibodies to the medication. So that means your immune system actually fights the drug and tries to destroy the drug, treats it as something like a foreign substance, like if you had the flu or if you had a cold and it tries to kill the, the medication. 
But a caveat to that, so that was about 1%, but a caveat to that is that about 0.6% of people that develop these antibodies to the medication developed antibodies to their own uh, GLP-1 hormone. So I don't know what the consequence of that is. Um, it wasn't mentioned in the uh, package insert. It wasn't, uh, I didn't see very much information about it on the internet if it's, if it's something that's, if it's something that's dangerous or not, um, but it doesn't sound beneficial at all. I mean, if you can think it's like you're producing a hormone that is, you know, all hormones are kind of important and it's killing some of it, um, that can be, that would be concerning and that did occur in some people, uh, about 0.6% uh, of people that took Ozempic. Because of the upset stomach type side effects, uh, the, the dose is increased slowly 0.25 milligrams uh, at the same time every week to 0.5 milligrams at the same time every week and then your doctor will decide whether they want you to increase to one milligram a week and that's uh, that's to reduce the chance of uh, the nausea vomiting dehydration that can be occur that can occur with the medication so if you guys found this useful uh, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe, I would really appreciate it a lot. Have you guys had any weird experiences with drugs like Bietta or Victoza? Let me know. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Thanks a lot.